The H.O. Scale Misabi Northern Railway is a fictitious operating company owned by the Misabi and the Great Northern Railways, with limited participation by the Northern Pacific. In my alternate universe, it was created in the early 1940s to more efficiently utilize railroad resources in northern Minnesota to handle increased traffic demands with fewer people due to priority needs for the war effort. Actual railroad routes used include parts of the Great Northern's Misabi Division and the Misabi Division of the Duluth Misabi and Iron Range Railway. As the map shows, Duluth is east of both the Twin Cities and the western portion of the Misabi Iron Range. This schematic of the Misabi Northern shows the main line division using the Great Northern's route in green from Duluth to the Twin Cities of Minneapolis and St. Paul. The Iron Range Division on the upper deck is a mix of Great Northern in green and maroon for Misabi trackage. The Great Northern operated both lines as East-West Railroad while the Misabi operated timetable north and south. By agreement, both divisions are operated as East-West Railroad so that all crews looking at the model railroad have a consistent view where Duluth is east to the right. A further simplification for crews is that the final miles that were eastbound on the Great Northern's Transcon mainline to Minneapolis are kept as timetable westward. Proctor Hill is the perfect opportunity to climb up out of the Lake Superior Basin from Duluth to Proctor on the upper deck. This allows the ore dock decks to be properly above the waterline of Duluth Harbor. Dock turns then also have the challenging grade to get the empty ore cars the rest of the way up to Proctor. The Masabi Northern is proto-freelance to capture the flavor and variety of the geography and interesting operations. It was never intended to try to capture museum-accurate scenes, a time trade-off for a large private model railroad. My priority is on realistic operation and performance, and not let the prototype restrain me from having a fun and interesting railroad to operate. Very good track geometry is a key ingredient for smooth, reliable performance. The railroad is built for hands-off operation so that operators may enjoy the rail fan scenes unfolding before them. Magnetic uncoupling is used along with fascia mounted controls for all turnouts and some uncoupling magnets to minimize the need to reach into the scene. Car forwarding is based on car cards and waybills. I custom printed to suit the Wasabi Northern environment, such as five car mine block cards, so that 60 car ore trains are a reasonable pack of 12 car cards plus caboose and header card. The mine block cards each have five car numbers on them, and the ore waybills are really more representative of the blocking instructions for the ore classification process worked out at Proctor. They include the boat, dock tracks, and the pockets where a given boat will be docked. Iron ore delivery involves a cycle of four train movements in addition to the classification switching at Proctor. Each of four crews in the ore pool handles all four job types in a cycle during an operating session. Each crew starts at a different job function as, so they don't all arrive at Proctor at the same time. This way all four crews get to switch at mines and make a dock turn to deliver loads down and bring empties back up Proctor Hill. Now we'll see movies of various trains running on the Sabi Northern. They will include both onboard views and trackside views of various locations and operations. The various views taken at different times are positioned in geographic order to help visualize the geography and facilities across the railroad. First we'll see ore empties get their power and run westbound to Bovee on the Iron Range. Unfortunately, the new Proctor Roundhouse has not made it from the shelf to the railroad yet.
A friend kit bashed and enhanced a nice stand in for the unique Proctor Coaling Tower. Turnouts are designed for smooth flow of equipment to compensate for having to be much sharper curves and turnouts than full-size railroads can use for the situation. Use of prototypically accurate number 6 and number 8 turnouts with straight frogs actually detracts from the appearance in motion of fine models. My turnouts are based on 60 inch radius diverging routes, approximately number 8 in size but smoother. They can easily fit where a modeler would expect to use number sixes on a yard lead, for example, by extending the closure curve past the frog to meet the body track. The Proctor Yard Complex has 13 body tracks with a capacity of 400 ore cars. There are eight classification tracks corresponding to the eight tracks on the two ore docks, a concession to keeping the model yard within the confines of a basement. There are four tracks for the empties yard, where GN transfer cars are separated from Masabi cars, and road trains are built. Trains departing Proctor are pure Masabi or pure GN trains, including power and appropriate cabooses. Heading out on the main, we spot an S6 class 010 waiting at the scale on one of the class leads. It is ready to swing behind an inbound ore train to shove the rear half of the train over the way in motion scale. The end of double track on the Misabi Northern is at Iron Junction, where a spring switch lets westbounds come out without stopping. Part of the Peg Trestle and Steelton are seen in the distance as we approach Timber Ridge. Timber Ridge has an interchange with a logging railroad named Misabi Southern. It also has a long passing siding to handle ore train meets. The Misabi Southern Shea is shoving empty log racks up the switchback for timber harvesting on the giant ridge known by Ojibwe as Masabi. Farther west we roll through Hibbing, the business and commercial center of the Iron Range. The Great Northern's Hibbing Yard is kept busy serving many businesses requiring frequent switching. The hand laid Code 70 track and scratch built turnouts here I built in 1985 in suburban Chicago and it is now serving in the third version of the Masabi Northern in Lakeville. The second version was in Omaha. Hibbing is also the base for a Great Northern local turn, providing tr freight service to the West Range and Cass Lake. Next, the Great Northern's Kelly Lake yard, where two Class N3 2880s are ready. Kelly Lake is a prototype staging yard to assure prompt delivery of empties to mines and assemble loads for road ore trains to make the long run to Proctor. 
It's home to heavy mine turns handled by GN's Workhorse Class M2 2680s. Another N3 has its loads ready for departure. The Masabi Chief Mine at Kiwatin is one of the mines served by the Great Northern. As you've already been seeing, the Masabi Northern offers many broad vistas for open running between towns. For this reason, my priority on scenery is to get basic ground cover in place first. Additional features, including trees and massive forest cover, as well as details, will be added as time permits. Continuing on, we get a bird's eye view of the Great Northern's large Lindale Yard in Minneapolis. Ore empties are now entering the small support yard at Bovee. Bovee does have modest facilities to service switchers assigned here. From the middle of the long yard, we have a glimpse of the much compressed representation of the Trout Lake washer. The track between the arrival track and the main line is the departure track on which loads will be gathered for the road or run to Proctor. We'll see the final moves building a road or train. Nearby is the annual reenactment of the driving of the gold spike on the Masabi Northern. I'll take this opportunity to apologize for those of you who are time travelers. I do have a complete fleet of diesels to operate the Masabi Northern in the early 60s era because I also like first generation diesels and a few second generation. I normally keep them less visible with polite company and operators, but a few strays were out of the barn during this tour. In over 210 operating sessions so far, I've only had one person ever asked to see more of the diesels. Enough said. I'll take a quick break here to describe my forest technique. I need literally several hundred feet of background forest for central and northern Minnesota scenery. The good news is that for relatively lush forest, 
you can't see the trees for the forest, as brush grows up at the edges that hide the tree trunks. My first notion for massive forest was black fiber fill stretched over old rusted brown chicken wire. Chicken wire will hold a shape that you may want in a specific location, but is difficult to cut and produces sharp wire edges. I also found black fiber fill expensive and harder to find at reasonable prices. Enter my wife's vision for alternate materials. She buys large rolls of thick quilt batting for her church quilting group. So I cut off a one foot by four foot strip off the end with ordinary scissors. You can pluck out tufts randomly for texture and still have an easily moved mat, unlike fiber fill, where extra work and care would be needed to try and keep it together. It also turns out it then can be quickly and easily sprayed with cheap flat black paint, and the paint mists through the open texture with great coverage. Spray on cheap extra hold hairspray, shake on two or three shades of green ground foam grass, and you're done. An added bonus is if you move and build a new layout, you can easily stack a bunch of forest layers in a big cardboard box and apply it to where needed on the new layout. Sure wish I had discovered that two large layouts ago. Part 2 on the Misabi Northern will focus on ore operations, bringing ore from the Iron Range to the docks at Duluth.